Hello everyone! Would you believe that the whole month is gone and I'm here with another finished pages video? It feels like yesterday when I published the last one. Anyway, when we are here, let's look at what I colored and painted in September. Uh, and I just realized that the half of the October is gone and the end of the year is like super close. Isn't that scary? I mean, like, where is the last year? <laughs> Never mind. Let's start with an announcement that I already launched Neko Civic Art Academy. Yay! This is something I wanted to do for a really long time and I thought it through a lot and finally I came up not only with an idea but with a realization as well. Now, what's that? You may already read about it in my community tabs post or in more detail on my Patreon. But in short, Nekosmi Art Academy is about teaching you in detail how you can use all kinds of art media, coloring techniques, how to combine and mix colors, what to be aware of and much more. The best part of it is that the main focus is on how to use all what you learn in coloring books. Of course, you can use everything for your own paintings and drawings, but since I do mainly coloring, it just makes sense to focus on coloring books. The Art Academy will be available only through my Patreon and I will leave the link in the description box below this video so you can check it out if you like. <laughs> and to not create any confusion, at this moment I work on the Academy in my free time. And as many of you know, I have two jobs. So the frequency of the videos for the Academy may be like one to three videos a month at the beginning. Because for me it's the most important to provide you with a quality, not quantity. However, for the future it would be nice to produce videos on a weekly basis, but only if it will not be just for the sake of having a video, but I will be able to keep the quality. And what I am showing you here are practice sheets on which we will be practicing various techniques like the first one that is finished and various color combinations. It will always have some connection to the final boss, which will be some coloring page and for this first bunch of exercises I chose these two pages from the Shooting Star coloring book by Maria Trolle. So, if you have any questions about the Academy, just leave me a comment or message me via Instagram or Patreon or Facebook or anywhere else. <laughs> Alright, now let's finally get to the finished pages and I start with the pages that were done for my Patreon and as usually to not have to mention which pages were filmed for the Patreon and which not, I will let the Patreon logo pop up on the screen when I have the Patreon page. <laughs> The first page I'm showing you was picked by the members of the Fellowship of the Coloring Cats and it's from the Relaxing Corner by Coco Wayo. My intent was to create a romantic evening scene with limited palette, so the main colors used here were red and turquoise, or rather teal, and in the end, to emphasize the evening coziness of the place, I went over some highlights with a yellow or yellow-orange color. Next we have The Main Street by Teresa Goodrich and again this page was picked by the members of the Fellowship of the Coloring Cats on Patreon. Um, well, to be precise, the book was picked in the Coloring Book Shuffle, which is our monthly game, so all the members can put their favorite coloring book into the shuffle and I will just randomly pick one. <laughs> And then I'm using a random generator for picking a page. I can tell you this game is really scary, but in a good way. The scary part is that you never know which is your next page to color, but that's also what's very exciting about it. Anyway, this page was done with Prisma colors and actually it was the first time I colored wine bottles. So before I started, I searched Pinterest for many and many references. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. What do you think? <laughs> Another pages are from the coloring book Shooting Star by Maria Trolle. For the first page I was using watercolor brushes by Ohuhu, trying to get better with this medium. Overall this is the third page I did with them and despite watercolor media is my cup of tea, 
The brush pens are giving me maybe too much control over them. And I know that this is exactly what many of you may be looking for with watercolor media. On the other hand, for me, it's just too much extra work to make the brushes to do what they want to do and not what I do. And I just cannot work with that. So I will probably not be using them that much in the future. The second page in this book turned out completely differently than I wanted. For instance, look at this pink. I didn't want to add this color at all. But here we are. In the end, I have to confess that I like the pink part. It somehow reminds me of a gate to the other realm. <laughs> if you ever watched Red Dwarf, this would be my presentation of Stasis League. <laughs> now my favorite coloring book by Hannah Carlson, which is Cottage. I did two pages with matching colors and again with a limited color palette. Doing things like this can really help you if you want to color more because this will save you so much time. Imagine that you don't have to choose the colors for the next page you want to color. Isn't it amazing? As we all know, choosing the colors is the most exhausting part in the whole concept of coloring. Well, maybe right after choosing the page, right? Just to be clear, the page on the left with the apple and with the frog was done as a coloring tutorial for my Patreon and the second page on the right with the flowers were done for my YouTube channel. So if you are interested, you can check it out the video there. After some time, I finally did a page in Worlds of Wonder by Johanna Basford again. And I'm happy to say that it was a quick one. I was using White Knight's watercolors for the whole background and then a mix of brands of pencils for the house and balloons. And of course, what else should I be doing for the background than the galaxy, right? It's my favorite thing to do for the background, actually. And yes, I plan to make more pages in this book in the similar spirit. I have owned this coloring book by Karolina Kubikowska for ages, but I have never ever colored anything in it. I just think that her illustrations are perfect as they are, but somehow I ended up color in it and I fell in love with this book very unexpectedly. It's like a perfect match with my style. And thanks to the sketchy look, it kind of dissolves the stress about staying in lines, especially when you do the outline. I always thought that I will struggle with coloring in this book just because of the sketchy look. But in fact, it was so easy. My first page was this crystal double page. And um, yeah, you may have an idea that my favorite and personal crystal is amethyst. <laughs> So it was an obvious choice to color this page like this. <laughs> Another page in this coloring book is the Kingfisher, which was done with watercolors and pencils on top of it. And I bet you wouldn't guess, but this color combination is really one of my favorite. Unfortunately, this coloring book is a little bit older, so it's now out of stock everywhere. But I contacted Carolina and asked her if she plans to reprint the book or if she plans to provide the PDF version and she kindly replied that there may be a reprint next year. However, pay attention to the word may be. So don't take it like 100% sure information that the book will be reprinted, okay? <laughs> it's just a possibility. Now, before jumping to the pages you like the most, and yeah, I mean in Kirby's books, let me show you what I painted. It's not much, so it will be quick. I think I had never presented you with the watercolor sketchbook I crafted by myself, and I thought it's a pity. So here it is. The cover is made from another coloring book. It was a local coloring book, so I think it will not be available abroad. And actually, I didn't like the coloring book. So that's why I, you know, used the cover of the book for my sketchbook, <laughs> because yeah, that was the only nice part. For the paper, I used cold press, 100% cotton balhong paper. I cut pieces from the paper roll and stitched them together. I don't say it's perfect for the market, but I didn't aim the market, you know, I aimed myself. <laughs> so it's perfect for me. 
Stitching such a thick paper was actually quite hard and painful, but it was worth it. <laughs> I have only two paintings in it and somehow this sketchbook became the one where I paint something that is out of my typical theme to paint. And the fact that both paintings are sea creatures is pure coincidence. I have two more paintings in my favorite Hane Müller sketchbook. So this first landscape was completely out of my comfort zone if it comes to colors. I don't usually use this color palette and I will probably not use it again anytime soon. <laughs> not that I wouldn't like those colors like reds, yellows, oranges. I really like them, but not in my paintings. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just more comfortable with colors like blue, greens, violets and all the muted tones. So after that, I had to find a balance so on my next painting, I was using my usual palette. <laughs> Talking about stepping out of my comfort zone, I decided to do something to improve my painting skills. So I kind of forced myself to attend an art workshop. I usually don't feel good on such events. I'm more the never leave the house type, you know. <laughs> However, this time I felt that pull and it was totally different than I imagined. The people there are just so different from other people I usually met. And yeah, I felt really good there. This is what I painted on my first day and it was the best I ever did. Until the next painting, which I painted at home. It's also on a larger format, it's A3. And I used everything I learned from the previous lesson. Even though there was actually nothing to learn at the workshop, because it wasn't like a presentation, it was more about exploring your skills and your inner artist. It's really amazing how much just being there helped me to improve my painting skills. And this still isn't my best painting I did, because I painted my best painting ever up to this date yesterday <laughs> on another workshop day. All right, back to the coloring books. Worlds Within Worlds is the next one. And I think I colored this page in August, but if I'm not wrong, I did not show it in the last video. So I'm showing it to you now. And in the coloring video I already published, you can see that I had a totally different idea at first. I wanted to use water-based markers, but I ended up with watercolors, soft pastels and pencils. It was really a lot of work and it looks a little bit too flat, but I like it. Probably because there is a dragon. When I think about it, I should color more dragons, because they are really cool. The next page from the same book is this nightly antelope, done again with watercolors and pencils. For me, as someone who doesn't like to color small details, and you know that really well if you watched some of my previous videos, the foliage was a pain. It's like half of the page are just those tiny little leaves. And at first I was like, no way I'm coloring it. I wanted to paint over the leaves and just cover them as usually. <laughs> but I knew that the result will look so good with just silhouettes of the leaves. So what should I do, right? I had to overcome this unpleasant feeling about little details and just color every single leaf. <laughs> Yeah, I felt like my hand died, but it recovered really well and I have been able to color another page, this time in Animorphia, in which I am not coloring that much, but I really wanted to color this zebra double page for a long time, so finally I did it. Yes, it's overly glossy. It's because I was using soft pastels on the background and I had to seal it with a fixative. Unfortunately, if you apply it on colored pencils, it will just make this glossy layer. So yeah, the fact that I cannot look at it because it's so blinding is just something I have to live with now. It's just a price for using soft pastels. Everyone who is using soft pastels and colored pencils and seal it with fixative knows my agony. <laughs> anyway, there is a hidden symbolism. You can see that the zebra is wounded. 
its skin is torn apart so you can really see the flesh under the skin but despite this it still has a spark in the eye not letting the wounds from the past push it away and is moving forward and that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and if you want to see more of what i colored and painted check out the video that just showed up on the screen have a meow someday and bye bye